Okay, you open up Photoshop and then open up the file that you want to work on. And what we're going to do, we're going to zoom in. Um, if you're not familiar with zooming in and out, you can access it through the view menu. And there are also some keyboard shortcuts. And you can see for me, I'm working with the Mac version of Photoshop. Um, but for the PC, it'll be very similar um, for you. It's probably on the PC, Control Plus and Control Minus. And to fit everything on the screen, Control Zero. For me, it's this little squiggly thing, the four leaf clover that we call the Command key. So, Control Zero or Command Zero fits the image to the screen. We're actually going to zoom in uh, a little bit and we're going to come up into the Select Filter and Select Color Range. We're going to make sure that we have sampled colors here in the selection box here at the top. We're going to have fuzziness set to 25 or thereabouts. And we're going to have the leftmost of these three eyedropper icons selected. That's all we need to do there. And then we bring the eyedropper over to a star. Click on it. You'll see this preview area here has just changed. So we've got our initial sample of colors. We now need to add to that sample. So we'll come back to this row of three eyedropper icons here and collect, sorry, and select the second one which is add to sample. And we're going to come and add um, more colors uh, to the sample by clicking on a variety of stars. We might need to zoom in a bit more to help with this. And you'll see how the preview area here is showing more and more stars being selected. Technically, we're not adding, or sorry, we're not selecting stars. We're selecting pixels anywhere on the image that have the same value, the same color as what is under the eyedrop when we click the mouse button. What the fuzziness does, <coughs> excuse me, is to broaden the, the color range that's picked. So if we have it down to zero, then only the colors of the pixels that we've clicked on will be selected. But if we change that fuzziness value and make it really maxed out, then kind of everything gets selected, which clearly we don't want. And what I found is somewhere around 24, 25 works fine. So that means that it's a range of colors around each of the pixel colors that we've clicked on with the eyedropper gets uh, added to our um, selection, our range of sampled colors. So we're probably about good there. We'll click on OK. You won't see much has changed. If I zoom out and fit everything to the screen, you'll see we have this twinkling effect. Uh, that just shows the areas that have been selected. I'm going to zoom back in so you can see what's going on. Now you'll see here, for example, that we've got a star that's selected, but not the whole of the star is selected. So we need to actually modify the selection. So we come up to the Select menu, choose Modify, Expand, and then we choose a range of pixels or, or a number of pixels that really depends on how many pixels wide and high the actual image is. So I've picked 10 here and that's clearly too much. We want this sort of uh, moving zigzag or moving dots around each star to be much closer to the edge of the star. So let's undo what we had just done. Let's go back to select, modify, expand. Now let's try five. That's better, but not good enough. So let's undo that again and come back and do select, modify, expand. I'm going to go with three this time. There we go. That's pretty much perfect. So we've selected everything, but we run the risk now of having quite a sharp um, boundary between the minimization process, which will be inside of these. Um, moving dots areas and the outside and that could actually potentially ruin your image so one further modification to our selection is to feather it and we will feather it by half of what we expanded it by now we expanded it by three pixels so here we will feather it by one and a half which i've already got plugged in so we'll click on that you won't have seen any difference <coughs> excuse me I'm just getting over some COVID. You won't see any difference there, um, but if we zoom back out, oh, wrong one. 
Now the marching ants, as it's often known, this sort of twinkling effect is getting in the way. So I'm going to hide that. I haven't deselected, I've just hidden the selection information. We're going to come up now to do the minimization. We'll click on filter, other, and come down to minimum. We'll make sure here that roundness is selected. We'll make sure we have preview selected and we can change this radius thing here. That will change the extent to which the stars are knocked back. A radius of 0.2 will knock them back a tiny amount, not nil, but a tiny amount. Um, if we bring it up, you'll see in here that uh, the preview is showing the difference. And actually, if we toggle this preview, you'll see how things are working. This is before the stars get knocked back. And this is after the stars get knocked back. So one is probably not enough. 1.8, maybe that's closer to what you're looking for. Depending upon the what what effect you're looking for and the nature of the DSO. So in this particular example, I've got the Jellyfish Nebula. Uh, it's quite faint in some areas, so I probably want to knock the stars back quite a bit. Something more like that, perhaps. So let's go with that. We'll click on OK. It does its work, and we're done. All we have to do now is to save that under a different file name. I don't like to, um, or I should say I like to keep every version of what I've got. So I've got stars knocked back, as in this one, and I've got the, the image before I knock the stars back. That's just me. You might want to overwrite what you had before, but that's basically it.